questions? So we gonna start it. Uh, so first we start with the prayer, all right? So let's put ourselves in a relaxed mode. Let's calm our hearts, calm our minds, our thoughts. Let the spirits, our spiritual friends, that is uh, that we are surrounded by them to bring us peace to bring us love to bring us comfort and make this lecture much more enjoyable enjoyable that you, you can try to learn everything that you can and share our experiences too blend with the spiritual world and the with the spiritual friends, make and send all the positivity to the ones our to the ones that we love, to the ones that we are surrounded, to our friends, our co-workers, even that are not in presence, that even just a grain of a good thought can reach those in need. This time of staying home, of a lot of thinking of our lives, of the world situation. Let's make this more enjoyable possible. Let's make this the opportunity of a grown spirit, of a, a grown of a life, a better life, a better opportunity when everything will be done like when all the situation end will be better people will be people that can help others people that leave the selfishness aside that will be here on this earth to help and now let's start the lecture thank you for you guys being here and so be it. Okay. All right. So uh, continue what Samantha was telling about last week about false prophets. Um, it's really hard for us to identify specifically who are the false prophets, right? And uh, one of the good things that the spiritists bring us um, for us to identify it's not only that like uh, we uh, are based on like facts that like we like things that they are not proof. So spiritings brings us the the things that are not proof. They are proved by science, but like you know these things they are not proved by science, but you still don't know how to explain. So spiritings bring us uh, the opportunity of us to see ahead to see beyond what you can see with our eyes to see what uh, people cannot see so that's one of the tools that we can use to uh, identify the false prophets so here we're gonna say a little bit of the not only false prophets like people that are incarnated like us like people but also about the spirits the disincarnated uh, spirits that they can be false prophets so they can uh, be the ones bringing you bring us uh, like a false uh, false uh, false answers and false theories and then if you don't uh, if you don't know how to identify them if you don't know how to check if they are like being truly and being uh, saying the truth uh, we can go to the wrong way of the road. Uh, it's also like you can apply this in our lives too, right? So when you, we, we believe in people, they're not like truth people, you know, they're they are not like, uh, they're fake people. If you go through their theories, we always gonna lead to the wrong way of the road for the life, for the path of our life. Uh, uh oh i'm sorry people i don't know how to use this <laughs> oh there you sorry. go sorry there, there you go, go. <laughs> there you go 
So uh, there was an alert that like uh, Alan Kardec uh, put on his book that was brought from St. Uh, John. And he says, uh, computer, oh my goodness. <laughs> Dear beloved, do not believe all spirits, but test whether the spirits are from God. For many false prophets have appeared in the world. So it's not new that there's a lot of false prophets uh, in this world. This happened since uh, Jesus' time or even before Jesus' time. So we have to, all, you always have to be careful because we have uh, to think that it's not they, they are like tests for us, but it means that. Um, there's not all the time good people in this world. So you always have to be alert with the information that we receive from people that, that say themselves they are prophets, right? It's very easy for someone uh, to say some beautiful words and people would believe them that just because they are saying uh, beautiful words means that they are a person that you can uh, trust right? A lot of times, like if you realize, uh, we can be surrounded by people that speak so nice, you know, you're super uh, encant encanted, enchant enchanted, like about the, uh, by their world, you know, uh, they touch you, but like we have to be careful first. We have to check if that person that is like preaching you, uh, if that person really acts like the way they are preaching because most of the time they can preach something very beautiful but are they really acting like what they preach so when you don't act like you preach it's hard to convince people that you are what you're preaching you know what i mean you got like super repetitive but i think i i could you know give you the idea what i'm trying to say Everything's good so far? Oh, yeah. And uh, the spiritism phenomena. On a spirit phenomena, far from giving credibility to false Christs and false prophets, have much to the contrary, come to deal them a final blow. By providing an explanation for a certain order of phenomena that have been incomprehensible until now, spiritism destroys what still remained in the realm of the extraordinary. So saying back again, uh, spiritism was able to bring a lot of explanations of things that happens in this world. But at the same time, you have to be uh, careful with uh, all these answers are given to us, right? Because sometimes um, we receive messages that like, that you have to be careful that if that proceeds or not. We have to remember too that when Alan Kardec wrote the books, he consulted a lot of different spiritism groups, right? He consulted a lot of groups that did questions, that uh, try uh, help that helped him to put in words all the explanation that they how the spiritism work uh, spiritism world works for us, but he didn't consult it only one person. He consulted a lot of groups, and these all groups brought him the same answers. When you have like serious groups that brings you the same answers it means that you're going on the right path but if you have uh, a contra contradictory contra contradictory information or a misunderstood between all this information you can pass this information wrong and you can uh, lead to the wrong way because not only incarnated people um, has this uh, wrong way to interpret uh, things, but also we give chance 
for the lost spirits that existed because it's not because their spirits they all good we know that there's some misunderstood spirits some lost spirits that they can take advantage of the spirit the mediumship of people and can uh, give you wrong information for example like on our wednesday meetings uh, louise always tells us we have the common sense to identify when the spirits that are coming to us is giving a product um, how i say uh, a, ve a good information or a good uh, message but we do have also the common sense and the knowledge to identify those spirits they are trying just to mess around with us right but not only that for us to identify that the most important thing is to understand how the spirit is works. And when I was preparing the, the lecture, I watched a an, an lady talking and she said something super interesting. Uh, when Chico Xavier, the, the very known uh, uh, medium from Brazil, was started writing all the books that was psych, uh, psych, psychographed, is, is how I say it. Again, uh, does anyone psychography? Uh, yeah, so. like psychography. Yes. So when he started writing, Emmanuel, the spirit that like give him the the helps him with the information, the the books and everything, he told him, whenever you have a doubt, whatever I am talking to you, you go to the Jesus teachings and you go to Allan Kardec book to make sure that what I'm giving to you are truth information. Because once you uh, just write whatever you're hearing or seeing, it doesn't mean that the dead spirit are giving to you the right information. So the first thing, and they always say to us, for us to uh, learn how to identify the right and wrong prophets and the right and wrong spirits that give message to us, we need to study. We study, understand, and the most important thing, we have to have doubts. Because it's, when you have doubts, it's when we go ask, we go search, and you go find an answer. It's, it's not easy, no, it's not, because uh, mostly like uh, in the beginning when you're learning things, you have a lot of doubts. And for example, you started receiving messages for you, it's kind of a new world, you know, like, wow, I'm receiving messages from like bad people, you know, let's put in a, like a really low way to say, like they're giving us message, but first, are you being able to identify if that spirits giving you the message are good spirits or they are like lost on their own proud or their own like vanity? Because even that uh, the, we know that there's a lot of spirits that pass, they are still full of proud. Uh, how, how many spirits will receive on Wednesday, like lost spirits, lost souls, they are looking for themselves because they don't know uh, what what happened to them or they don't know uh, why they are on their places because things that they have done in past lives and they become like selfish spirits selfish uh, selfish spirits or even like a, not even mean spirits I wouldn't say mean but like spirits that doesn't give us credibility and also it's important to, to understand that on the spiritism, there's no miracles. It's not because we talk to the spirits, to the people that they are from the spiritual world, they're going to let you know exactly what's going to happen to you and they're going to do a miracle in your life. No, we are here to help them grow there and also they're here for us to grow ourselves. For example, for the mediums, a lot of people uh, take mediums as like saint people just because uh, they have um, 
how can I say, they have the gift, let's say like this, to talk to on other spirits. But it's not exactly like a gift. We know when you come as mediums, it's because we have much more to learn and grow on this earth than people they are not. But at the same time, everyone here, it is here to learn. So everyone can be mediums. Some is more uh, developed and the others new, still need to study. But the purpose of being here is to study, to grow, to search for uh, answers for everything in our lives. Uh, also, like I said in the beginning, like uh, just as physics, chemistry, astronomy, and geology, they have revealed the laws of the physical world. Yeah. Spiritism. I have something in there. Spiritism has revealed other. So we we here and this earth we have mathematics, uh, geology, physics, chemistry, all of that. It helped us to uh, see beyond uh, our material world, right? But the spiritism it complements all of that. It complements because combined with all this science we can understand where we came from, where we are going after all this, why uh, we are here, all the purpose we have at this life on earth. So what is more incredible about spiritism is not only like a philosophy, uh, a religion, how a lot of people call this well, but most important, it works uh, in it connected, it's straight connected with the science which for me is very wonderful. Like uh, how, how can you be more, uh, how, how can you be more like satisfied when you have a lot of answers in your head right here in front of us? Of course, some of the answers we are still not able to, uh, not even accept, but to understand because it's not on our uh, level of knowledge. But why of them, we still have all this science and combined with our philosophy, we can like have a lot of answers for our lives. Uh, and the spirit, spirit science, by investigating the cause of certain phenomena, it lifts the veil on many, okay, on veil on many mysteries. So like I said, spiritism brings us uh, to answer all, or not all, but like I'll say most of the mysteries that happens around us or through our lives, we can find answers on spiritism. But it's not only like by what, you, like what people say to you, but most important, like when you start looking up and do uh, research about what you're studying, about all these phenomena, all about these mysteries. The truth is, like the sun, it dissipates the densest, like the densest fog. Now, how to the how the false prophet unmasked by Jesus? How Jesus unmasked all these false prophets? The incarnated are those they want to exploit in order to give more weight to their theories and adorn themselves. So, like I said before, like in the beginning. Uh, when a person say, says that themselves are prophets, you can identify starting uh, on realizing how they are uh, about themselves, how they preach their theories, and how they adorn themselves, how they put themselves to the top, right? So when people uh, start preaching, they're like, they do this, they do that. It's how you have to do, like impose, uh, impose like laws for you. Uh, then you have to put your, do a step back and uh, like, you know, go study a little bit better and see that it's not, that everything that that person is preaching is truth, is not full uh, right. So, that's why we have show the time, study, read the books. 
Uh, also by Jesus, that Jesus brought us uh, about their acts that correspond to their uh, devices. So how many times we say at the center that what, like, what is important if the person that is uh, every day in a church or every day in a temple and you know preaching for their their own god and leaving their their temple leaving their center leaving their church they are the meanest people in the world you know it's not what you preach but it is what you do and act with your life and now how spiritism brought us uh how it uh, gave to us the tools to unmask the people. Through the disincarnated, for example, through the spirits. Why is not going? Sorry, people. Okay, so they can be very hypercritical. This is the spirits, okay? The disincarnated people. They can be proud and they can be a pseudo learned spirit who have passed and adorned themselves while in life with venerated names and give credence to the most bizarre and absurd ideas. And they act by mediumship. So for example, people that while in life acted like they were prophets, they were leaders, like religious leaders, when they pass, they are still stuck with this, this idea. And what's gonna happen most of the time if they gonna uh, show up to uh, somebody that can see spirits or they have the mediumship for it, they gonna act exactly like they acted while alive. So they still think, they still have in their ideas that they are still leaders, they are still people that you have to venerate that, their names. They are still feel important uh, a lot that you can still treat them as like um, prophets. And uh, it's not right, you know, because uh, like it's probably like a lost soul, it's a, a lost spirit that you need the, that someone lead them to the right way, lead them to the, 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 light, um, the light way and find their own place uh, on, on the world that he's living now. So the identification uh, for the spirits, for the false prophets, first you give themselves, they give themselves respected names. So like I said, they put themselves as a, uh, respected, they can pass through like famous leaders, you know, they can say they, can, they were Jesus in the past life, uh, they can say they were Madre Teresa in the past life, you know, they can uh, false, falsely identify themselves. Uh, they preach separation and isolation. When spirits like that uh, shows up, to a meeting or like even to someone that is able to do this, to see the, this phenomena, uh, they can, most of the time, they cause their own separation and isolation of the world, right? Because uh, what's gonna happen here is that the person that is able to receive that uh, spirit, they gonna believe so much that they were a leader and they gonna, uh, they, they automatically they gonna they not gonna need uh anyone else so they they think they're good for themselves and anybody else is good for them also like uh, we have to have the good sense like uh, i mentioned also in the beginning uh, when we study we have more criteria to identify what is right and what is wrong. We have to have the good sense, the common sense of a group and identify that that spirit that is uh, showing up like in a medionic meeting, for example, uh, that spirit is saying that 
he's like God, he was uh, Jesus, he was like a saint, Saint John, or anybody that was like a very good leader in the past. Uh, so we have to, the common sense in group uh, to identify that that probably was a lost soul and then just giving wrong information for whoever is receiving it. And we don't, you do not have to trust. And uh, mysticism, uh, when we show up, like for example, you know these uh, people that go to uh, psychics, they like just want to make money out of it. I'm not taking the credit. Maybe they do have some kind of a mediumship. But once you use uh, towards the mysticism and uh, you need the ceremonials, you need all these rituals, it means that there's something not completely uh, true on that, uh, that act. So once, once you want to give someone a good message, once you want uh, you know, give an alert for somebody else, you don't need anything, you don't need to show off. Even as a spirit, even as a, like a spirit that is not incarnated, uh, disincarnated spirit, why you still need the rituals, why you need the ceremonials. You don't need anything like that. If a message is going to come to you, it's going to come to your way somehow. It doesn't need to be a show, right? Like we don't need to show all that phenomena from the spiritism in shows. Uh, the message is always going to arrive for the person the best way, uh, the best way. And <clears throat> It doesn't need uh, to be a shown off, a show for everybody to see. Whoever has to receive the message, you're gonna get the message. Who doesn't gonna get message, doesn't need to know the other person got the message. Uh, <clears throat> we sorry, sorry, okay. Also, uh, mercilessly avoid all spirits who present themselves as exclusive counselors, preaching separation and isolation. Once again, once uh, you, um, you have to avoid those spirits that like, need that exclusivity. Uh, we are here to help a lot of people, a lot of spirits. They are not in this world anymore. We are not exclusively for only one spirit saying that that person is more important than the other spirits. Everyone is important and you are gonna help everyone that we can. Now to check if the spirits are from God. Okay, so now we learn how to identify the bad spirits, the false spirits and the false prophet. But now how can you check if the spirits are from God? How can you have this sure? So Spiritism provides the means to test them by pointing out the characteristics by which good spirits can be recognized, characteristics that are always moral and never material. So we don't care about material. The material is going to go one day, you know. You have to be uh, focused on our morals. We have to be focused on the way we act to our life, the way, we, the way we act towards people around us. If you treat people around us as good as we can, uh, if you don't uh, mistreat people, they don't have like a lot of uh, monetary situation. They are like a low monetary situation. We have to treat everyone equal. And this is the base to check if the spirits are from God. If that person, uh, acts the way she preach or he preach and if that person give more value to her moral to her to the uh, their material uh, world material matter then we ca you can identi identify that that person is definitely a god person a person that comes with the god values with the and put in practice all the Jesus uh, teachings. <clears throat> also, we have a message from a protector spirit, Luos. 
uh, I think this, believe this was in France, that says, for amongst the invisible, there are also those who love to delude when they get the chance. So how many people are blind and like even people that just get happy with, uh, with the preachers out there say, but for them, they don't look up, they don't do research. So whatever they say is valuable. Whatever they're saying is a rule for their life. No, we have to question it. We have to research. We have to look up and see if that is the truth or not. And even if you don't uh, agree with that person, that's okay. It means that you went through that, you look for books, you look through everything. So then you have arguments uh, to discuss that, to put your opinion in practice. And that's all what the spiritism is trying to like teach us, you know? It's not because a person show up and said like, I have a message from God and you believe it. It's not because he mentioned God on his speech. It means that he's saying the right thing. You don't know. It can be right, but at the same time, it can be wrong. So always learn, always look to read books about the theories, about the philosophy. So then we always can question it. And most of the times uh, with our questioning, we gonna find the like interesting answers and uh, our doubts, it means that you're gonna for sure find an answer. It's not, it's just, it's not gonna be just a, a, like a, a stupid uh, doubt. Any doubt is, any doubt is valuable. All, uh, actually, sorry, all doubts are valuable. And also before anything else, learn to distinguish between good and evil spirits so that yourselves do not become a false prophet. Because nothing happens if you, uh, for example, if you just believe in a false prophet, then you're going to start saying what the false prophet said to you. So you're just becoming like him. You're not like giving value to your words. You're just repeating of, some, uh, of somebody else's word. So that's why everything that is said to us is good for us to look up and make sure that what we're saying is right. Because sometimes, just because other people say something because you consider that person God, for example, and you just repeat what they're saying, most of the time you can make ourselves full of ourselves. <clears throat> also for amongst the invisible, there are also those who love to delude when they get the chance. And, <clears throat> okay, where are you guys? Okay, yeah, I finished the, the slides. Yeah, and then like that lesson, it reminds me every time that like we are mostly on a mediunic section, sessions on a Wednesday, that uh, we have to be careful with all the message we receive from the spirit. So that's why Luis is always bringing us information, uh, always like giving space for us to, uh, answer our doubts because with all this information we clearly can identify when a uh, spirit or even people around us giving information disincarnated and incarnated when they're giving false information because it's very serious when you have false information you can elude a lot delude a lot of innocent people you can uh bring a lot of people to hopes that they cannot have anymore you know it's like a it's 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 not that the spirit's gonna make uh, everything worse for us but it's, it's it's super easy for us to look at the spirits and uh just want the good answers but unfortunately it's not only the good answers they're gonna have all the time and uh, sometimes it's how the spirits, the, the disincarnated one can trick us because if you go look for answers and you want to find certain answer and a certain spirit give you that answer, then you can delude yourself that like you're just going to receive like beautiful flowers. But it's, we know that it's not, you know, we have, we have to have discipline on the studying, on the knowledge, so then you can identify who is giving the support, who's giving the, the good information out there. 
And I would like to know if you guys have any doubts or something that you would you like to add to our uh, lecture? <clears throat> well, I think like what for me, one of the main, um, the main information on this is like when I said last week too, you know, that idioms, we can be deluded by the disincarnated and then we can become false prophets. That's why the base, the base of anything is the study. So this way we can recognize what is true and what's false because a false information, depending on, you know, what mouth comes from, people believe it's true and then that, that becomes a problem. So as, uh, as the precursors of the spiritism, we have to um, um, we have to be very careful and, and with what what are we speaking so we can we cannot become um, we can be, we cannot become false prophets. Yeah. And I think also Could that works not yeah uh huh yeah. I think it not only works for our like spiritual life but like for our regular life too with people that we are surrounded to with. People like to go and send out uh, wrong information, like even Swellen mentioned last week with this pandemic going on, there's a lot of people that like to put horror in their life, in our lives, you know, and giving some more horrific, uh, terrible information. So then you get more scared of what's going on. Of course, you have to be concerned. You have to take precautions of everything. But at the same time, look yourself for the right information. And then you're going to take your own actions. You're going to like uh, decide for yourself what you should do, what you have to act and uh, where you have to, when you have to act. So then you, you, it's going to be better for yourself. You know, it's not only on a spiritual world, but this applies on our regular life as well. Yeah. <laughs> there you go there you go no. oh, okay i think it's an important this is an important chapter um there are some people that think if they have communication from a spirit that oh wow you know this this must be something that it has to be true or they give their trust away immediately yeah. because it's coming from a spirit when in reality, you and I sometimes are more wise and, and aware than some spirits are. And I think it's an important chapter. Um, and there are a lot of people, the false prophets who are alive, who have a lot of people following them sometimes. And I, I've seen a lot of people misled, not just by mediums, but by so-called spiritual people of all kinds. <laughs> and, but you know what's good to see too? Like a lot of people who've passed, um, and I've also seen it with some people in my own experience, there are those who continue with this deluded state but there's a lot of people who have a review. It's, an, it's like an enlightened review of themselves. And all of a sudden they get to see, oh, wow, now I see what I didn't know, or I, now I can understand how I was. So sometimes it can work in a positive way when they pass on that now they have this enlightened insight to see and get beyond that limitation. And that can happen too. Um, yeah, no, for sure. And that, that's very good for them because uh, we consider, consider those spirits, those ones that like didn't get lost. They find their way. They understand actually mm -hmm. what they were probably were doing when in life was wrong but now they understand how it works and that changed their lives and they can find finally the light for them and some of them are just so regretful 
even if they were not bad people. It, it's like, you know, they, they do a review how they might have acted in their life and they might have been decent people, but mm -hmm. were not perfect. And yeah. they get to really see objectively and then they're often very regretful on how they might have been towards their family or other people. And uh, so, but then some of them don't wake up right away. So that yeah. happens. Yeah, it's already said when you don't, we humans don't wake up like in life. Can you imagine when you go to that way that you get, you see the truth and you still don't wake up? Mm. It, more much more sad in my opinion mm. but for those the one that like accept the reality and accept the the truth and uh i believe the regret it's it's the most um i would say beautiful way to you feel guilty of things you've done but like you regret you don't want to be like that anymore you mm -hmm. know you really like just hated the way you were and everything I think regret is, uh, is, is bad and good at the same time. I think yeah. it walks together. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. So it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think that if somebody has, even if it's not spiritism, but if their spirituality is vibrant and they are really trying and they've cultivated a certain amount of compassion and wisdom and understanding, mm -hmm. that's going to help them immensely when yeah. they pass over. Because then they have that connection to make. They have, um, I don't know the right word, but I think it's much easier for them as opposed to somebody who really didn't believe in nothing or cared about anything except the mundane, you know, Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, all that's taken away from them, and they have nothing else to reference to. There is no faith, there is no understanding, so they're, they're completely lost. And then it takes, it, I think it, the transition is probably much harder for them. Mm -hmm. Because they have nothing to, to rely on. They have nothing to, to draw upon at that time. So, yeah. Tamanda? Well spoken, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm above questioning. You can question what I say, you know. <laughs> we, we definitely miss you. <laughs> Louisa, you want to say something? Oh. No, you are so fine. So you cover everything. Wow. It was very good. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is there any other doubts? Anything that you guys want to say, considering? No. No. Question, should we, uh, like, uh, energize the waters or is just at a seven o'clock? I don't know. We can do it. We can do okay. So I don't know if you guys have water bottles with you. I'm gonna get mine and then give me a second, okay? I wasn't sure. I'll get mine. Okay. Oh, by the way, when we started the session, there was, I think it's someone that's connected to me on, on the sofa, a uh, woman in spirit joined us. She was very interested in what we were talking about here. <sighs> All righty. I have my water here. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay my friends uh, let's start uh, relaxing our bodies uh, whatever you guys did or lay let's start putting our thoughts on good vibrations let's 
send our positivity or our good energies for those in need, for those in the hospitals, battling all disease and battling COVID-19 that is terrifying us. But we know that with your help, with the spiritual help, we're going to succeed these difficult times. We're going to go through all these difficult times. If you hang your, if you uh, hold your hands, dear God, if you hold your hands, dear Jesus, our brother that was here on earth to show us that love is the first thing we have to maintain. And maintaining love, we can go through everything in our lives. Let's put our faith on their hearts and make that strong every day and make our hearts full of light, full of love, full of good energy. So then you can spread all that to all our neighbors, to our family, to our country, to our nat uh, natural and birth country and to this world that the spiritual spirits they are here working incessantly to help us being blessed with our praise being blessed and helped with our lectures too and then le learn that and know that working together with the spiritual world we always can be stronger every day thank you for the presence of all the incarnated all the disincarnated thank you for the opportunity to be blessed by all of this good energy and let's pray also and ask for our spirit spiritual friends to put the right medicine on our waters and help for ev everything that this water can bring us to our body, to our soul. And that goodness can spread through our life, through our, uh, our spirit, to our, through our body. And thank you for your presence here and so be it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys.